Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today we're going to be talking about 2015's Mission Impossible Rogue Nation and its 4K Blu-ray that came out from Paramount. But before we dive into that, if you are a fan of 4K Blu-ray reviews, movie reviews, listen podcasts, we try to do them all here on the channel, and nothing helps this channel out more than by you just simply liking this video and subscribing to the channel. So Mission Impossible Rogue Nation was originally released back in July of 2015. It has a runtime of about 131 minutes. It's directed and co-written by Christopher McQuarrie, who also actually did some uncredited rewrites on Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. And this would be the team going forward. It would be Christopher McQuarrie directing, Tom Cruise starring, produced with J.J. Abrams. The three of them would really be the team moving forward to Paramount, and they would really get this franchise going in the direction that you really know now. And I really do think that the what the Mission Impossible franchise franchise is at the current moment kind of got started with ghost protocol but this really would become the template of what the mission impossible franchise would become what they wanted it to become tom cruise and christopher mccrory obviously have a great working relationship together they really enjoy each other's work and when watching the extras on the 4k from what i was able to understand the two of them just like to tell the same stories they really have a great understanding of what the other one wants to do so when you have a star and a director and a co-writer working together like that tom cruise also produces these movies so they have a certain vision of the where they want these films to go before this movie every single one of them was directed by a different director all of them bringing in their certain style of filmmaking to it so every single mission impossible movie including this one all looks different from the previous one although i could honestly say that this one compared to ghost protocol it's more like a half measure or a half step up compared to like what we got from mission impossible 3 and the jump from that to mission impossible ghost protocol and actually what they were going for is this they wanted to kind of have like a a mishmash of all the mission impossible movies and kind of combine them into one like perfect perfect Mission Impossible movie, and that's what they were going for here with Rogue Nation. This one tells the tale of Solomon Lane, uh, who we believe is the head of the Syndicate, which we got hinted at at the very end of Ghost Protocol. The Syndicate is a, a bunch of rogue agents from a bunch of governments throughout the world. They're all kind of teaming together to become this one big syndicate of terrorists who are just trying to create chaos in the world so that they can eventually become the power by creating chaos they are the ones that are going to be the ones left standing and that's really what they're going for with this but they need to get funding for that so they're hunting for the big MacGuffin of this movie the red box but Ethan Hunt and his team are going to stop them but unfortunately Alec Baldwin's character the head of the CIA has brought to the attention of the US government all the fallings and failures of the IMF and he wants them disbanded. Jeremy Renner's there to help them make sure that that does not happen. But unfortunately, they do decide that the IMF now is going to be disbanded and all the agents are going to be scooped up and brought into the CIA. But Tom Cruise was already out there hunting the syndicate. And after he sees somebody get killed, where he had no choice but to watch it happen, and Solomon Lane chooses not to kill him, but he'll make sure he sees exactly what happened. He does not come in. He's on the run. He's a rogue agent himself. Alec Baldwin and wants him brought in he doesn't want him out there doing this on his own trying to take this whole syndicate down by himself even if Alec Baldwin doesn't believe that this is a real thing he doesn't want him out there doing it on his own but unfortunately he feels like he has to and then he finally gets his old team back together we get the old band back together you know we get Jeremy Renner Simon Pegg Ving Rhames we get a new addition of Rebecca Ferguson, who we don't know who, what side she's playing on, but she plays her character perfect in this movie. And then from that point on, we got ourselves a story of us trying to take down the syndicate, unravel this mystery, which I really do think that the screenplay for this one is probably the best screenplay since the first Mission Impossible movie. They really kind of lean into the spy espionage stuff, kind of pull back a little bit on the action compared to like what Ghost Protocol was, which was more of an action comedy. And the action set pieces were really the benchmarks of the movie. And, you know, the story doesn't go too, too deep. I think that's one thing that a lot of people complain about with Ghost Protocol. Now, the tone of Ghost Protocol works perfectly for me. But I understand if this movie works perfectly for other people in the sense that, yes, there is some comedy bits in here, but they're not really as big as they were in Ghost Protocol. This becomes definitely more of your typical spy espionage film, which actually ends up leading to what I think is probably the best third act in any of these Mission Impossible movies when the mystery really finally starts to unravel and we understand what we've been watching the whole time. And the reveals, I really do think, pay off perfectly. Even though we lead up to kind of a third act action sequence, it's nothing like what we saw in Ghost Protocol or 
what we would see in Mission Impossible Fall. And I did appreciate that about this movie, even though I feel like this movie is a little bit uneven. I feel like this is kind of Christopher McQuarrie and Tom Cruise getting their footing together of what they would want the Mission Impossible franchise to become. So it kind of can lean into sometimes, you know, the comedy doesn't work. The script itself isn't perfect, but the screenplay itself is perfect. I really do love how we start out this movie. We foreshadow the very end of this movie. We foreshadow everything that's going to happen throughout this film. The character development is pretty good. And the story is just very interesting throughout. I just feel like the first and third acts of this movie are just way better than the second act. You know, we have to get our usual action sequences in here. And they're all done pretty well. I love the motorcycle chase. I obviously love the one with the underwater scene where they're building all that tension. I also think it's all just shot beautifully this is a much warmer tone looking movie than the cooler looking tone of ghost protocol so the cinematography changed in this i still prefer the cinematography in ghost protocol but that's a preference i can understand if you prefer the cinematography in this one but for me personally i actually prefer the cinematography in ghost protocol i also just prefer the tone of ghost protocol overall i think that rogue nation is kind of that you know that middle stepchild that kind of just got stuck between what i think are probably the two best in the entire franchise but it's also a necessary step because this is actually kind of a part one to Mission Impossible's Fallout, which, you know, they weren't really doing at the time. Like I said, all these just kind of felt like missions up to a certain point. And that's the same thing with uh, Ghost Protocol, whereas this one really does feel like they're kind of setting up a story that they are going to use going forward, which I really also appreciate because that's something that the franchise has never really leaned into doing. And this is also the first time in the franchise where they set up Ethan Hunt as almost like the superhero, this legend, the legend of the IMF, Ethan Hunt, the guy who could do it all. He's done all these crazy things. He's somehow infiltrated all of these crazy plots and schemes, and like people are talking about him now. And I think this is the first time they actually ever leaned into to that where it's like is he just a superhuman like how does he do all this almost like what tom cruise is it's like leaning into like what we believe the legend of tom cruise but it's the legend ethan hunt this is the first time they ever really leaned into that and, and i actually really appreciated that i always appreciate that's like what they did with the john wick movies you know is this guy really human like i really like how they leaned into that in this movie i really appreciated that about that that's another thing i think where you have christopher from quarry jj abrams and tom cruise writing together where they kind of know exactly what they want to do with the character and i think they nailed that with this movie and overall, I think everyone does a great job in this movie. It's not the best in the franchise, but it's still a really solid one in the franchise. It's one that I definitely think you should check out. I think it's absolutely necessary to watch, especially if you're going to be watching Mission Impossible Fallout and the Dead Reckoning films. You have to see Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, so I can highly recommend that, even if you don't grab this 4K Blu-ray that we're going to talk about right now. Open the door! How did you get in the plane? Not in the plane! I'm on the plane! Open the door! Well, here it is, just like the previous four that we have talked about. This one came out in 2018. They all look uniform to each other. This one's color scheme is yellow. I actually was lucky enough to get this one with a slipcover on it, like I said in my previous reviews. Not all of mine have slipcovers. They were only really out for the initial printing. So you could kind of tell which ones I got after the they came out. I wasn't a huge fan of 2 and 3, but I'm really glad I ended up getting them and rewatching them because 3 is an awesome one of the franchise, and 2 is actually very solid, so... I'm very happy that I have them all. So you go underneath, you get the same box art underneath. And these all did come with digital codes. So if you actually are invested in our digital code giveaway, we will be giving all these digital codes away in our Friday video. So definitely make sure you're checking those out. You come inside and just like the previous two, we have a three disc set. So you get your 4K, your Blu-ray, and then you get all extra features on that Blu-ray. Although there are some of the same special features on the Blu-ray that are on the 4K. And even though this has Adobe Atmos track on the 4K, the Blu-ray itself has that same Dolby Atmos track and has the same audio settings. So that's pretty cool. And I think that's just because this came out in 2015. And it's just before 4K came out in 2016. So that's when we were starting to get some Atmos tracks on Blu-rays. You know, if you go back to like 2014, 2015 Blu-rays, there are some Atmos tracks floating around out there. So the Atmos track is pretty damn good. It's a really good Atmos track, but it's actually surprising. It's comparable to the 5.1 track that was on Ghost Protocol, which is not an Atmos track, which really impressed impressed me because ghost protocol has a really solid track for something that's not an atmos track same thing with mission impossible 3 so whatever team at paramount is working on the audio they always do a good job whether it's on an atmos track or not so i really can honestly say that even if you don't watch this with the atmos track the other audio tracks and there is a lot of audio tracks in a bunch of different languages on here i've said this in all the reviews but i just love how paramount sprang for all the bells and whistles when it comes to their audio tracks really try to include everybody in whatever languages they speak same thing with the subtitles on the 
Blu-ray disc that's just extras, you could actually choose a subtitle language for the extras. And I've never seen them include that before. So I actually thought that was really cool. And that's something that when I was watching the extras, listening to Tom Cruise talk about how he asked all these studios to fly him out to other countries to try and understand their viewing habits. You could tell that Tom Cruise wants to include everybody in his films. He makes movies for everybody. That's what he's going for. He just truly loves to make movies. And that's something you find out in all these extras as well. The only complaint about the extras, there are all separated in the little featurettes which is cool i appreciate that but it could have been edited together into an awesome making of documentary again that's just a minor complaint for myself it's not a big deal it's all still there it's all still laid out for you so that you can watch it any way in which you choose if you want to choose to skip some of them but i like to watch them all and i like it if they're all edited together with like one and a half hours two hours a nice making of documentary like a feature film i always do appreciate that just a little bit more but again minor complaint for myself i'm just really glad that we get all of these extras on here all of these options when it comes to the audio tracks in general i really do appreciate them giving you the choices that's one thing that paramount can really lack on sometimes but it's really nice to see that they really held nothing back with any of these mission impossible 4ks and it's also still somehow a big jump from the blu-ray to the 4k when it comes to visuals we get the hdr 10 the adobe vision it's only a three-year gap from the initial blu-ray to the 4k so it's surprising that it's still a noticeable jump now this isn't the worst blu-ray in the franchise i felt like mission impossible 3 and mission impossible ghost protocol had some of the ugliest looking blu-rays this one not the best looking either it still suffers from that muddy looking skin tones where the skin and the hair all kind of look like the same texture because the resolution is just not that high and we get that all flesh jab once we get to the 4k and we can actually see just every bead of sweat on like alec baldwin's head every strain of hair is just now very noticeable and you know that all looks different every material looks different from the other one that's one thing you're going to get with the dolby vision and the hdr the colors now are a lot brighter there's a lot more pop to this everything is going to pop off your screen now in comparison to what that blu-ray does the blu-rays looks just flat it's not a horrible blu-ray that's what's crazy it's just that these 4ks are just such big jumps from the blu-rays and they're such high quality like these are show pieces for you paramount put out some fantastic blu-rays for the mission impossible franchise and that's really what i wish every studio would do for their franchises like i like the rocky 4ks and the superman 4ks they're good but they're very uneven some are better than others every single mission impossible 4k all look good like mission impossible the first one is probably the worst looking 4k in here and that's a solid 4k it still is a big jump from the previous blu-ray paramount really restored these to the best they can absolutely look i cannot imagine that i will ever see anything that looks better than these 4ks of course we'll be talking in 10 years about the 8k release of this and i'll say the exact same thing but talking about rogue nation here I just love what they did with the 4K. It's, you know, the only reason I can't give this a 10 is because I gave Ghost Protocol a 10. And Ghost Protocol, I think, is just a better film. So I'm going to give this the same score that I gave Mission Impossible 3, which is a 9.5 out of 10. Either way, if you can get your hands on this 4K, whether it be in that new Steelbook that came out, in the Mission Impossible 6 film 4K collection, or you grab the same one that I have right here, you're not making a mistake. You're going to be very happy that you did. And you're going to be so impressed with the visuals of this and the audio you were definitely going to feel like you got your money well spent and i really do appreciate that from paramount because sometimes they hold back certain features with some of their releases but this is not one of them this is one of the best they've ever put out just like their previous four mission impossible films and when we get to mission impossible fallout we'll talk about what they did with that 4k as well but anyway guys thank you so much for being here with me on another episode of let's talk i really do appreciate all of your support and if you want to keep supporting the channel nothing helps out more than just by simply liking this video subscribe to the channel, going out maybe whatever country you want to, and just tell all your friends about us, and then we'll be seeing you around.